Hey guys, Coda Boy 32 In this episode, we're going to do a real quick tabletop review of the Primary Arms 1-6 scope. I'm going to tell you the reason why I went with this bad boy. Stand by. Alright, this here's Coda Boy 32 coming at you I'm just going to not say anything. Hey guys, good morning. This is Coda Boy 32 Check it out, man. Got my cup of coffee. And got myself a new primary arms 1-6 to six scope. And she's going on rifle number one build using that American Defense standard recon scope mounts. Got from primary arms. But now I used that, uh, the whole intention for these scope mounts was when I got my arms inked and put on the Mark 12, I took these with all intention of using it with this particular scope. There's a, there was a long plan down the field. <laughs> anyway, number one rifle right here is going to be a high speed, low drag deal. But anyway, this video is not to do a, a detailed review of this scope because there's plenty of them out there. I mean, we've got Such out there, did a great one, Guns and Gear. He did a fantastic one on the ACSS reticle. I recommend you guys take a look at those things. Uh, Nick Taylor does a great job out here on those bad boys. But uh, anyway, my <laughs> the reason for this video is to tell you the reason why I purchased this particular scope. And one is, is I was watching a video on the Strike Eagle because that's the one that compares to this guy. And they were talking about this really cool deal to get a spare battery in the windage uh, turret cover. And you know, I was like, wait a minute, look at there. Primary Arms has a battery. Let's see if we can zoom in on that. Hey, oh look, that's cool. All right, so anyway, Primary Arms has a spare battery in their windage cap. Uh, what else is the same? So I started checking out the photos and looking at this thing, and they are damn near identical. And I invite every one of you guys to take a look at it prior to your purchase if you're trying to make a decision or if you're on the fence of whether or not which one you want to go with. If you look at your zoom ring right here, there's a little nut here or a little uh, bolt that's in the same location as the Strike Eagle. Then looking at the specifications, do a side-by-side -side comparison. They're damn near identical in length and weight, field of view, the, their you know, half-inch MOA adjustments on the top turrets. They, even the turrets have these little the, the brass rings. They've got a little notch right here. Now these guys right here up here, you can't, zero, you can't put these into uh, where they go back to zero, but you can turn these interior turret markers right here. Okay, 11 settings of brightness on the illumination. And, you know, other than a few differences in the focus ring back here and your zoom ring right here, they're basically the same thing. Now, one of the things I did do was I reached out to Primary Arms. And Marshall over there, their CEO, returned my email very quickly, I might add. And basically my question was to him, hey, a lot of questions are, and I've seen some comments out there, just specifically on uh, Such's review of the Vortex Strike Eagle, is that a couple of people said, looks like it's made in the same fact, but, you know, without confirmation, we just don't know. So I wanted to get it from the horse's mouth. So he based, his response to me, and it was very smart, was there are a lot of manufacturers out there. There are a lot of factories. The factory we may use could be, in fact, the same factory that they use, but it's not verifiable. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm just paraphrasing here, May, mainly to say that there's some optic engineers that may, they may be using the same specs in other factories as well. Now, that's not to say that the, the lenses may be different, the shock value might be different, the waterproofing value might be different, but my contention is, is why would somebody want to do that? They could take the same package, slap a different name on it have a couple different design issues here and they call it their own but going back to the value of a scope I think on, as for the market this is probably the best value out there primary arms is one of the reasons why I always go back to those guys I try to go away but I keep coming back is because they offer the best value and that's where it all ends up at this guy's got the ACS reticle one to six I took it to range the other day and I'm just rambling on guys from here but the, it was amazing, man. Even at one power, shooting at the indoor range, 75 feet, I was able to bring it up, go get on target real quick using the, the center dot, just like a red dot. And then you zoom it out to six, the clarity was fantastic. Now, the only thing that I would say that may be the downfall of this scope 
is the eye relief at six power is very precise. You got to be right on it, but that's got to be something you need to teach yourself. It's the same thing with the five times prism scope. Well, whoo, anyhow, I hope this was informative or at least helpful. You know, I'm out here in my shop. It's about 35 degrees. I'm enjoying it. It's a lot better than sweating to death, but guys, that is the primary arms. One to six power scope. This is on rifle number one. I'm looking forward to taking this thing to an outdoor range and throwing it really far downhill. But I think the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the 45 degree Picatinny rail with another primary arms mini red dot. So when that comes in, we'll go ahead and sit down and take a look at it, take this thing to the range, see how the package works as a whole. And that's about it, guys. If you know, like the video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. We've got some really cool videos coming out. And uh, God bless those folks out there in France. With that being said, if you're in uniform, watch your six. And as always, God bless America. God bless those men and women in uniform 24-7. So freedom is not free. Hey, guys, situation awareness. Always be watchful. It's Code of Boy 32. Out.